who's going to uh, talk about the state of hearing in Korea. Are you ready? Yeah, so Kwan's going to do an introduction to the Korean market. So whenever you're ready, take the stage there, Kwan. Well, it's my um, first time presenting in front of many people in my life, so <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> are you recording? <laughs> so yeah, um, hello everyone. Um, it's my pleasure uh, to uh, pr have a presentation today here. So my name is Kwan Woo Kim. Uh, you can just call me Kwan. Uh, I'm from uh, Korea Internet Neutral Exchange, so Kings, you can call it Kings. Um, um, I was gonna um, talk about the um, peering uh, regulation uh, that is going on uh, in Korea, but since it is the government thing and uh, it's kind of hard for me to uh, represent about the uh, regulation uh, today, so if you have any question about it, then you can just come up to me and I can talk to you in person. Yeah, I'm just gonna share all the information that I know, okay? So for today, um, so uh, I got a, a presentation request uh, very last minute, so <laughs> there wasn't much time for me to uh, prepare, but I did best in my, uh, what I could. So today, um, Although many of, of you would know better than me about the uh, Korean market, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Korea and its internet market. So, um, yeah, I would like to give some, some basic information for those companies who is planning to expand their businesses in Korea, uh, into Korea, uh, such as information about submarine cable uh, system, the status of uh, Korea internet and data center. So, uh, Korea, um, you can see the, you can find the world map there. Uh, there's red dot, uh, it's a small country. Mm, yeah, this, uh, you can find it uh, in between Japan and China, Hong Kong. Uh, the size of the area is considerably small uh, compared to the population in Korea. Uh, we have seven major cities uh, with Seoul as a capital city and eight provinces. Although it is a small country, uh, Korea seems to be uh, the one of the most advanced countries in terms of uh, internet and technology. Also, the penetration of uh, internet use is very high, uh, as I will tell you in the later slides. So ge geographically, um, Korea is located, uh, again, uh, between Hong Kong, China, and Japan and most of the cables are directly connected to uh, those countries. Uh, Korea mainly have four cable landing stations. Uh, on the west side, there's a um, um, landing station called Taean, and on the south side, uh, there's Busan, which is the second largest city in Korea, and, uh, and one in Goje. With those cable landing stations, uh, we have nine submarine cables coming in, uh, most of the internet traffic um, goes uh, all the way up to Seoul and spread out uh, within uh, the country since ISP's cores are located in Seoul. So um, what about the, oh sorry. So what about the uh, internet in Korea? Uh, in Korea, uh, we have four main IXS internet exchanges, um, including layer three and layer two. Uh, those three layer three IXPs, so um, those three layer three IXPs are uh, run by, operated by major ISPs in Korea, so KT, SK Broadband, and LG U+. Uh, so we have a KTIX uh, run by KT, DIX run by, uh, it used to be a DACOM, and DIX run by uh, LGU Plus, and SKBIX uh, by SK Broadband. Again, uh, those are uh, layer three IXs, 
which means they do not usually do a settlement free peering, uh, but only paid peering. Uh, they, uh, there used to be only one layer two IEX, um, which all you, you know uh, is pure IEX, uh, was Kinks. But now um, there is one more IEX just came out. Uh, it's run by uh, Sejong Telecom. Um, just for your information, through uh, Kinks IEX, about 14% of eyeballs um, through MSOs, so we have MSOs and SOs in our fabric, uh, can be found. Uh, for this slide, um, I want to give you some idea of how much percentage of traffic uh, you can expect uh, from each ISP by seeing the number of eyeballs and market share. In terms of fixed network, uh, KT is the top provider uh, uh, covering 40.9% uh, of traffic uh, of eyeballs in Korea. Uh, KT used to be uh, owned by the government of Korea and op also operated by the government. So they have the most network uh, infrastructure assets uh, among the ISPs. SK Broadband is the second place uh, covering about like 25% of market share in terms of eyeballs and LG takes the third place. Um, we also have many MSOs and SOs, uh, regional SOs. Um, among the um, SOs, we have uh, big ones called DLive, HCN, T-Broad, um, and CJ HelloVision, although CJ he HelloVision has been uh, acquisited by LGU+. Plus. Um, those M MSOs have 14% um, of internet users in Korea, and they're um, they are the only. Uh, they are considered as a tier two ISPs in Korea, and those ISPs are only the ISPs in IX fabric. So major ISPs like KT, SK, and LG, they are not in L two uh, layer two IX. In terms of mobile network, SK Telecom has been uh, the largest. Uh, has has the largest number of um, subscribers as of uh, um, 41%. KT takes the second uh, uh, as 26% and LG is 20.6%. Um, yeah, uh, just to give you a note, um, there is, uh, beginning of the presentation, I told you that there is uh, some kind of peer and regulation going on in Korea right now. Um, I cannot, um, you know, this goes in details, but the basic rule is that um, the senders pay, uh, the, the senders pay to um, receivers for same tier. And uh, lower tiers uh, pays uh, for whatever they send or receive. So that's the basic rule. So um, in this case, SK Broadband is considered as tier one um, and SK Telecom is com considered as tier two, although they're in same SK group, but considered as uh, different uh, entities. So nowadays, um, so basically, um, if there's a traffic um, towards SK, so there, if there's a traffic going through SKB and heading to SK Telecom, then SK Telecom has to pay for the traffic to SK Broadband. So nowadays, what SK Telecom is doing is uh, uh, having a direct peering with the content players uh, to avoid um, the paycheck uh, to SK Broadband and get some revenue out of the, their uh, peering. Oh, sorry. Yeah. In addition to uh, the mobile network, um, so 5G network, um, it is not spread out properly yet, but uh, 5G is growing uh, as mobile operators are, you know, uh, throwing aggressive promotions uh, in the market. So started from um, February 19, uh, sorry, uh, 2019, the total number of 5G users are now uh, 4.6 million. Um, so last topic I want to talk about 
and also you need to think about is the data center. Um, in 1992, uh, the total power capacity of data center was about uh, two megawatts, but it kept increasing drastically. We now have 157 data centers and 80% of them are located near Seoul area. Um, due to the market entry of global CSPs and CPs, uh, starting from 2015, the number of power, number, the number and the power capacity of data center has been growing exponentially. Uh, you, can, you can find it on the graph. Mm, and we are expecting a 12 times increase of data center, uh, number of data centers and power compared to the year 2000 uh, by um, 2030. Um, because of the um, rapid uh, entry of global CSPs in Korea, um, the existing data centers are quite packed. So a lot of data, data center pro providers are, you know, uh, building, start building their data centers, new data centers, and there are a lot more are coming. So by 12, 2022, uh, there will be 10 or more data centers which are uh, tier two, uh, tier three, or equivalent, or plus in Seoul, Seoul area uh, by 2022. So those are the major. So uh, you can see uh, the logos, company logos, and those are the uh, major data center operators in Korea for your reference. Yeah. So if you need a data space, data center space, then yeah, please contact them. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's it for my presentation. So if you have any questions about, you know, about peering regulation thing or any other question about Korea, yeah, feel free to, free to reach me. Thank you. Don't run away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I told you not to ask questions. <laughs> Um, so I'm Tom Paseka from Cloudflare. Yeah. Um, do you think the interconnection situation in Korea will improve? Will improve? Yes. Well, just uh, my personal, yeah. personal thing, <laughs> personal opinion. Uh, I believe the government tends to preserve the market, the uh, domestic market at this point. So, uh, but it was uh, last president was trying to do and you know uh, this time the new new government is trying to you know uh, make some yeah meet in the middle so i think there there will be some improvements that sounds good yeah. um next question is do you think there'll be a second city to appear in korea other than seoul uh i think yeah you're telling me to uh place a pub in busan <laughs> yeah yeah, we are looking into it. Yeah. Brajesh mm -hmm. uh, Jain, please tell me uh, what is the primary motivation for more data centers to come up? Would you uh, provide your name and affiliation, please? Brajesh Jain, ISP Association of India. Okay. So I didn't understand. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, the question, what is the motivation for more data centers mm -hmm. uh, coming up at this moment? Oh, um, so data centers. Um, so there are a lot. So AWS, we in Korea uh, from 2015, AWS entered the market, and Microsoft followed, Azure followed, Oracle, IBM Cloud. They were all coming in, and um, there was it, it, in Korea right now. It's in transition period where. Um, you know, um, customers or, you know, in, uh, those um, companies, enterprises are moving from on-premise to clouds. So, um, yeah, they're expanding a lot and they're, so CSPs are asking uh, data center providers to build data centers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mastercard from JPIX. So uh, I guess uh, uh, online gaming uh, is the one of the uh, most popular uh, contents uh, all over the world, especially for in Korea. So uh, there are uh, more 
uh, better latency uh, will uh, be important for that uh, content. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have uh, um, any insight or thoughts uh, regarding of it, uh, please uh, share with us uh, because you are operating IEX in Korea. Okay, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard for us to, you know, uh, bring uh, those um, game companies in our IEX at this point because uh, they started with a small company in the beginning, so they don't have AES number or they, they, they don't quite understand what network is. So what we do is that we consult them to have like a, put, I mean, to have AES number and how to, you know, uh, have better network. Yeah. So. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> uh, Walt from Hurricane Electric. Um, to follow up on Tom's question, um, when do you think Busan will actually be viable as a second market? Well, uh, I guess your opinion and not that of your company that you work for. So Kings, uh, as I, IX player, I, IX, IX provider, we actually took a review uh, to extend our pop, IX pop in Busan area, but it found it was like three years ago. Uh, sorry, uh, it was five years ago actually, and we found that there are not many, not that many, um, you know, companies or you know, not much traffic uh, that will justify the backhaul. Uh, the local loop between Seoul and Busan because all of the traffic comes to goes up to Seoul first and then go back to Busan. So yeah, uh, sorry, um, let me repeat that. So there wasn't there wasn't uh, much traffic. They were just by um, our uh, our expense at that point at that time. So in Japan, there was an unfortunate accident, a nuclear power plant, which started the explosion in Osaka. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all learned that back in Japan, all traffic went through Tokyo, but it, it would be wise for people to take a stronger look at Busan in case something does happen in Seoul. That's just a statement. I just, I hope that in the next five years that Busan will get more traction. And as far as an IX, I wouldn't expect to have the Seoul IX and Busan IX connected. I, they should stand separate on their own. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, the most, the biggest problem is that the cost of local loop or dark fiber in Korea is crazy. So uh, in order to connect to IX in Busan, let's say, so ISPs around Busan area, they need to bring the cable uh, to our IX switch and it's, it's been very difficult because you know uh, KT, which is the biggest dark fiber or you know, local loop provider, they tend not to provide at reasonable price. Yeah. Is there any other questions from the room? Let's have a give a big hand of uh, applause to Quan. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And our next presenter needs no introduction whatsoever. The rainy. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Narani Nipuno, and I'm with Lynx. And um, in this particular presentation, I'm wearing another hat. Uh, so I'm presenting this on behalf of the URIX. So obviously, Lynx is a member of the URIX, but I'm not necessarily a representative of the URIX. So I'm going to start by asking, how many of you know what URIX is? Okay, I think that's most of you. Uh, so URIX is a, uh, an association of internet exchange points. It has Euro in it because it started in, in Europe. But in fact, it actually spans uh, broader than your IX. So for example, we have several IXP members from this region. It has 75 members, uh, and it also has patrons that support the work of the URIX. 
Um, so what is the URAX? Well, most of you know we have two, two fora every year. So it's really a place where internet exchange points come together and exchange uh, information and experience. Uh, we also invite patrons and we invite customers sometimes to share their experience so the IXPs can continue to develop. Um, URIX has also uh, um, started up IXPDB and that's mostly what my presentation will be about. Uh, and they organize workshops and uh, mentorship programs and fellowships, etc. Uh, another thing that's quite interesting is that they produce reports and they have benchmarking. So all the IXPs provide information into your IX on anything from what switches they run, what um, route service software they run, to how many staff members or financial information. Um, and this all gets put into it, this uh, benchmarking tool and, and um, gets anonymized, but it allows all the members of the URAX to, to figure out where they uh, benchmark themselves uh, compared to other IXPs. They do social media and YouTube and all sorts of things. But here I'm supposed to talk about IXF and the IXP. DB. So what is IXF? Well, IXF is really just an umbrella organization for all these regional IXP associations. So it's really a lightweight coordination uh, association um, between the four internet exchange point associations. Uh, and what is the JSON schema? Well, it's a community written schema that allows IXPs to report data into, um, well, in a very standardized uh, fashion. So that makes it easy for everyone to interact with that. So that includes IXP participants, locations, what hardware is used, route service, etc. And all this can be found, um, all the documentation on this can be found on, on uh, GitHub. So what is IXPDB? Well, IXPDB was an initiative that actually started at uh, URIX and that the URIX is now driving, but it's really a global uh, initiative that's, be, that's meant to be used by anyone, really. Um, and it was something that was started uh, very early on, but it was the idea is really that IXP sits on a lot of authoritative data for their IXPs. Um, and IXPDB was a way of collating that data in a way that others can interact with it. Um, and that then also uh, interacts a little bit with, with some of the other databases we have. So uh, if you look at IXP growth per region, you can see that uh, the different regions have, uh, well, continually grown. Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, Asia Pacific is, is still growing um, when it comes to IXPs. Latin America and the Caribbean is really one of the areas, regions that have grown significantly uh, over the last nine years, uh, mainly because that's been an area, a region that's been rather underserved. Um, and it's good to see that Africa is also growing. I think that's also in, uh, a region where you'll see a lot more IXPs pop up in the coming 10 years. So, uh, what, what does IXPDB do and what can you do with it? So it's actually, it's a public website. Anyone can interact with it. Even though it's driven by the URIX and IXF, it means it still is available to anyone and it has live data, so for example, you can see the newest IXPs in the database, so Qatar, there's Rom Romanian commercial internet exchange, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you can also look at IXPs uh, based on connected a ASNs, and the whole idea is really that the database sits there and you can, through various filters, uh, work through the data. So uh, it has aggregated data on the home page, so things like switch hardware. That can be interesting for uh, maybe members of an IXP, but certainly also other IXPs to, to know what switches uh, are deployed at other internet exchange points. And then also network peering hardware. So the IXP directory, um, one kind of a neat function it has now is that it has compare functions. So in this case, for example, you can compare various IXPs. So you can uh, filter and do searches on IXPs in a particular region or a particular city or country. 
Um, you can also see what IXPs are MANAS compliant, for example. So MANAS is an initiative to support routing security. And you can also see the number of AS numbers connected. But then you can also do interesting searches and look at uh, I AS numbers that are present uh, at uh, two different IXPs, for example, or you can look at what AS numbers are unique at a particular IXP. So, like I said, this, is, this database is used by internet exchange points, but it's also used by networks. So that might be, for example, if you're a network and you want to look at what, it, what are the unique AS numbers I can find at this particular um, internet exchange point, this is a particularly useful filter. So it has IXP profile data, and just by, by uh, filtering in various ways, you can look at um, the IXP business data, uh, network, so the IXP's LAN details, what locations the IXP is at, and then it can also show you what AS numbers are present, IP addresses, uh, whether or not that AS numbers or the network is MANAS compliant, um, whether or not that AS number uh, is shown in peering DB. So that's an interesting uh, filter as well if you want to you know, get more of the networks that are connected at an uh, IXP to put the data in peering DB. Uh, this will very quickly give you an overview of that. Um, and then also a number of other IXP connections and traffic. So then it has an AS number directory, and that's an interesting one in many ways, and maybe particularly for IXPs, but also for, for networks. So what you can do, so if you, the text is very small, but um, so for example, you can compare AS numbers. You can see, uh, let's say you are uh, a particular network and you're looking to peer with another network. You can very quickly look at what IXPs do you have in common and uh, which ones are unique. Um, and you can also see the type of network. So the data that comes in here, most of that comes from the IXPs, but the type of network, that is actually being pulled from peering DB. So that's, um, all this data is self-defined data, so to speak. So if you update that in peering DB, that will be updated here as well. Okay, so this is just to give you an overview of, of growth in AS numbers. Um, at different IXPs. Um, so over the last, um, let me see, um, yeah, since in the last 20 years, uh, the growth of AS numbers in Asia Pacific, in Africa, Europe, Middle East, Latin America, and North America. So what are the key features of IXPDB? Well, so it has automated data collection. So or organizational infrastructure, uh, connected networks and aggregated uh, traffic, etc. So all these things get collected in IXPDB. Uh, easy integration, because it follows the standardized JSON schema, it means that it's all in a standardized format. Um, like I said, data can be filtered in many different ways per region uh, and um, the IXPA managed memberships and also third-party data sources. So for example, MANAS, so it looks at who is MANAS compliant and, and uh, pulls that data in, and peering to be, so like I said, for example, the type of networks. And then now it also has this web-based GUI, so it makes it a little bit easier to, to interact with it through um, this nice web interface. Okay, so what's new? Uh, so version one of IXF JSON membership list is published. There's a new column that shows the traffic graphs. Uh, API authentication and documentation is coming soon. We're in Q1, so um, very soon. Uh, new JSON schemas for traffic and route servers is on the roadmap for the second, um, well, the end of the first half of the year. Uh, and then some more sophisticated analysis tools. And that's also why we come out and, and give these presentations, because it's really uh, a community-driven project, so it's very useful for us to hear uh, what you find useful and what upcoming features you want. 
Uh, and the idea is also to give a few workshops and, and, and uh, write some guides on how to implement uh, these things. So I think last year when I, I looked, there were about 79 or so exports, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And today we have 219 exports. So that has grown quite a lot, so it's very positive to see. And in um, Asia Pacific, we have 41 uh, IXPs put their data into this. So if you, any of the other ones of the 135 minus 41, IXPs um, who do not participate in this, then please do so. And that's it. So there's a mailing list for users that you can participate in. Um, you can find the API at that um, uh, URL. And the website, like I said, it's open, so feel free to play around with it, uh, try the different filters. And then also, most importantly, make sure to provide your feedback. So there's an IXP admin team uh, that you'll find at this particular uh, you, um, mail address, ixpdb-admin at urix.net. So any type of feedback and feature requests or anything like that, uh, then please uh, provide that here. Whether or not you're a member of any of the IXP associations or you're just a network or you're just a very um, active member of the community. So that was it from me. Thank you very much. Well, I have a question. Can you go back a couple of slides where you showed the entire world, please? So what does exports mean? So I show in the, the North America you have 19 out of 119. So those are the IXPs that actually provide data to the IXPDB. So this is all um, self-produced data, so to speak. So IXPDB takes that data from IXPs. So it means that that is a list of 19 IXPs who participate in this, and the others don't. So one other question I have is that you uh, stated earlier that um, your tool will show people that are not in peering DB. Is that correct? Well, what it does, so it, it actually shows the ones who are. So yes, I mean, you can quite quickly get an overview of, of yeah. Okay. whether or not this number is in peering DB. So if they're not... I, I can add them to they that. Are not. Well, the question I have is the, the second to the bottom, Cloud PTY Limited. Is there a way for your tool to provide uh, contacts for that? No. So, so this tool actually pulls the data from peering DB. So peering DB is the authoritative set. So, oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I'm curious, Linker, so I'm on the, on the board of URX uh, as well. As, so the ISP DB uh, for the automatic ISPs pulls data from a JSON standard schema that's developed. The ISPs will push this JSON data uh, because the ISPs knows all, the, authoritatively knows all the members they have, they will push the member data uh, to ISP DB. In peering DB, the network will have to actively go and register themselves uh, in order to show up. So in ISP DB, there might be networks listed that are not listed in peering DB because the data set in ISP DB will be complete. That's the difference. Thank you. Uh, and so you had a second question, which was, could we provide a contact details? Actually, no, because uh, that's a minefield because we don't own the contact data that's owned by the IXPs. That's why the data isn't there. Uh, and I think there was a discussion earlier in the week about whether or not IXPs can actually put that data in peering DB, but they cannot. So the networks own their own data in the peering DB. So, um, but of course, someone could contact that network and ask them, prompt them to put their data in peering DB. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Narani.
Toyama-san is next. He's going to provide an update for APIX. So let's have a hand for Toyama-san. OK, so thank you very much, Walt. So I would like to talk about an APIX and the peering edge update. So many of you know the URIX. So if you know the APIX, please raise your hand. Great, great, great. And if you know the peering edge, please raise your hand. Oh, maybe more than the APIX. <laughs> OK, so let's start and quickly. Uh, maybe you know the APIX, uh, what APIX is. OK, so uh, the point I would like to talk about is in the 10 years since it established. So this is a memorable uh, anniversary meeting this time. So thank you very much. And uh, oh, as you may know, in uh, our APEC region, uh, we have a lot of internet exchanges. Uh, 169, that data was also just obsolete, but uh, a lot of internet exchange exists. But uh, we have still the less than uh, this number of the members, IPX members, so we need to uh, get more members. Yeah, so why uh, association for uh, in IXP in APAC? So that is almost the same reason for the Euro IX. So we uh, refer to the Euro IX. So we need to have uh, this kind of association also in Asia back. So 10 years before, we established the, our association. Okay. So currently, uh, the members are 32, 32 IXPs from uh, 18 countries and economies. This year, uh, we had the new IXP, new IXPs and uh, new members. Uh, that one is in the THIX in the, from the Thailand, and the latest one is the Jakarta IX. So today, uh, the Kotogashi presented. Yeah. Okay, so this is the current, uh, current member, 32. And steering committee member, uh, the APX is operated by the steering committee, and we have the five person in. And uh, this time, we had an uh, selection. And uh, the new two uh, steering committee member has been uh, selected. For me, uh, continued, and Walt is a new steering committee member. Okay, so uh, we had a meeting history a long time, and oh, I'm sorry, but an update in these days, uh, attendees, but in the increase in the number of the attendees. Currently, uh, that, uh, this time, 60 or 70 attendees uh, uh, we had, okay? And the number of the APX members is uh, gradually increasing. Okay, at first, eight members, but then uh, gradually uh, increasing. The some years, no increase, but then uh, oh, four or three uh, members a year increased. So the current we have 32 members. And what was discussed and achieved by the APIX? So uh, the, our purpose is to uh, share the information and knowledge is, uh, about an IXPs in the APAC regions, uh, because in, uh, a well-established, uh, not only the well-established IXPs in the APAC region, but also the, in the development countries, new IXPs started. So we share our experiences to uh, the new members. So that, is, that was very important. And also, we learned a lot from uh, other internet exchanges and uh, all tools, like an IXP uh, appearing DB, IXP DB, IXP manager. And also a routing uh, software, uh, route server software, Bird, GoBZP, OpenBZPD, Quagga, such kind of things. Also, the, these days, uh, the RPKI is a hot uh, topic of, for us. Now, of course, uh, inside us, uh, comparing to the country by country, uh, about uh, the regulation, about the IXPs and the peering, and uh, their cultures were discussed. Okay, so and sometimes we invite uh, the I user of the ISPs, uh, like in the Google Hurricane, and uh, given some kind of advice and proposal from them. And uh, another contribution to Peering Community is in the Peering Asia. So almost you know that one. So Peering Asia is an operated in the Peering Asia Working Group under the APIX, uh, under the APIX. Okay. So current understand, uh, outstanding issues are described here. So we would like to increase more members and we would like to renew, uh, yeah, oh, more uh, encourage and uh, oh, information uh, exp experience sharing between the members. In order to do that, we uh, renew our web page now. 
and also uh, the membership fee collection and also the long term uh, issue is in the, to make a legal entity. Still, we do not have a legal entity. We are relying on the API and the APNIC, but then we will have a legal entity in the near future. Okay, so what's next? We, I said that we had uh, 10 years. So for the next decade, we had a panel discussion and a meeting. And this is not uh, all got a consensus, but just a proposal or a suggestion and ideas. But then, uh, we should, uh, we have to think about these kind of things. Uh, we do not have uh, all the documents about an uh, IXP or standardization kind of things. So we need to oh, make a document about the best practice in operation, uh, technical specification, uh, or a concept of the ISPs and relationship between the IXP and the government, and so on. And of course, we need more collaboration between, uh, between us to push vendors to fix bugs or implement a new technology that is beneficial for us, and so on. And also, uh, we would like to populate an open and neutral internet exchange in APAC regions, okay? So that will be, a, will be done with an ISOC or APNIC. Yep, so of course, we uh, continuously uh, increase members, encourage and uh, sharing the information between us, okay? So uh, we are always appreciated for the support by the APNIC, always in the support uh, providers in the meeting room or coffee break and lunch. So thank you very much, APNIC. Okay, so this is a portion of the APIX. And the next, uh, I'd like to talk about in the event report about in the peer in Asia. So uh, you almost uh, all know that in the peer in Asia is. So it is an open and a neutral peering event in the APEC region. Of course, uh, today's and uh, previous sessions, so Equinix uh, announced and the next APF. APF is also the same kind of event, but then uh, that is an uh, uh, Equinix private uh, event. So we are, uh, respect uh, their contribution to this peering community, but uh, also we need to uh, have an open and neutral peering event in this region. So we started this one uh, three years ago. Okay, so the 1.0 uh, was uh, hosted by the uh, BBIX, Equinix JP, and uh, JPIX, and the JPNAP. And we had uh, this event in Kyoto. Uh, at the time, uh, 239 uh, attendees and the ASM joined, it was in uh, 114. And the second one, uh, the 2018, by uh, Hong, uh, HKIX and Hong Kong Org team, and in uh, Hong Kong. At the time, attendees are 328, and S number is 149. So peering is 3.0. This was held last year, November 2019, in Kuala Lumpur, and hosted by the MIIX and MINOG. Okay, so we had attendees 364, and S number is 177. So increasing, increasing the number of the attendees, also the S numbers. And the number of confirmed meetings, this data is oh, oh, calculated from the oh, meeting makers. So oh, 1,355 confirmed meetings has been held. So I think uh, this event oh, fosters more and more you know, peering uh, in this region. Okay? So attendees, countries, and economies, and mainly uh, the attendees from uh, APAC region, but not, all, not also the APAC region, the North America, uh, Europe, and even from Africa, we have an attendees. And also uh, our ASEAN count, uh, ASS countries and economies, the mainly uh, the uh, local one, the Malaysian uh, network, uh, the top. And also the Japan is uh, the same number of the networks and the US, China, Singapore, or Thailand. A lot of you know, Asian you know, networks joined. So I think this is in the worth coming and having a, a discussion or a peering meeting in this uh, region. Okay, so this is an event schedule. Uh, we have uh, two days and uh, presentations, two thoughts. And we had a survey. So we got uh, 93 responses. So the quite good rate for the response. And overall, our reputation was oh, very good, very good, okay? 
and presentation uh, got uh, also a good uh, reputation. Okay, and uh, oh, the intention to attend the future appearing Asia, uh, most people are, uh, would like to attend. So uh, appearing Asia 3.0 was a great success. So uh, the working group is planning to have the event this year, 2012. And the next year in Asia will be held in Bangkok, of Thailand. Uh, that will be uh, hosted by the Thailand IX, THX, and the BBIX. And the date is in uh, 11th to 12th in November. So please mark your calendar and plan your business trip. Yeah, so in the autumn, maybe uh, the new disease situation will be settled down. <laughs> so please be the uh, plan to join that uh, appear in Asia. And also, uh, we are uh, collecting to the sponsor, okay? So please be the sponsor, yeah, as well. Okay, so see you at the Peering Asia 4.0 in Bangkok. So thank you very much, so any questions? Thank you, Tamaya san okay. Any questions? Thank you, sir. And now it's time for more peering personals, Raf. No, no, IXP personals, my bad. Okay. Thank you. So the next. So IXP personals. So this is an introduction of the internet exchange people. Okay, so this time we have, I think enough time, maybe uh, 22 or three IXPs will be listed. So this time, oh, Perry, oh, no, IXP persons, representative, please come to oh, at the yeah, stage and please oh, say, give a talk, oh, less than one minute. Okay, 45 seconds would be best. <laughs> okay, so first I will introduce the uh, Asian pack uh, IXPs and then other regions. So I think uh, the first one, uh, the alphabetical order, so okay, okay, so please come, please come. And the first one is now uh, Amzix team, Amzix Hong Kong and Indonesia, India. Hello, my name is uh, Onno Bos from M6. M6, uh, we operate uh, internet exchanges in uh, Amsterdam, in the US, in the Dutch uh, Caribbean, and in uh, the latest edition was in Bahrain, where we uh, deliver a new service, it's called IX as a service, where we manage and operate an exchange <coughs> on behalf of a third party. So that's in Bahrain. But if you look at uh, this region, uh, we also have exchanges in Hong Kong, and in India. Uh, in Hong Kong, you can connect from uh, different locations. So you can connect from Equinix, or you can connect from uh, at uh, MegaEye. Uh, we saw a growth compared to 2019 of 10%, uh, both on uh, the number of customers and on uh, the capacity. And the uh, latest addition that we had uh, was a European hosting company called uh, LeaseWeb. If you look at India, uh, we are in Mumbai, India, together with our partner Sifi. And uh, we have a point of presence there in uh, Rabale and in uh, GPX. Uh, we saw uh, healthy growth, actually, in, uh, compared to 2019, with about 50% uh, uh, more new customers. And looking at the capacity, more than 100%. And we are now going to expand to other locations in India, to, uh, first to Calcutta and then to Hyderabad. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anas. Next, BDIX. Next, next is BKNX. Uh, <coughs> Hello, everyone. I'm, 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 my name is uh, Satoru Tsurumaki, BDIX. Uh, currently, BDIX has a uh, pop in uh, Tokyo, Osaka, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand. And in this year, uh, in this month, uh, we expand our pop in Europe and the USA. Um, next, please. One more, yes. Uh, well, we have, uh, this is a, a pop in the USA and Europe. And uh, this pop is uh, uh, interconnecting, uh, including uh, Singapore and Tokyo and Hong Kong and uh, 
whole of the world. Uh, if you you interesting uh, <coughs> connecting to the this pop, uh, please contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trumak san So next we can next 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 is the uh, techix. Hello everyone, I'm Kitinan from Bikinix. So Bikinix, we are operating uh, in the Asian in Bangkok, Thailand. So right now we have two locations, only based in Bangkok, another one is in the downtown. Uh, right now we have a 32S number with the peak traffic is about 36. So we run, uh, we run BERT route server. Uh, but for the recent update, we have just uh, updated BERT from version 1 to version 2, which uh, also uh, validating with the IR and RPKI. Uh, this year, we have the fifth uh, pairing forum, which will be held in uh, 18 to 19 May this year. So everyone who would like to join us, please uh, save the date. And we also have the call for the presentation. Uh, please feel free to send us uh, the paper. And the latest one, we have the uh, route, coll route collector instance from the routeview.org piece. Feel free to peer. And if you have any inquiry, please send out the email to peering at mechanic.co.th or our website. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nan. So next, oh, the kicks. Next, next is uh, Dixie. Hello, I'm John Hill from DKIX. Um, so I'm focusing here mainly on Asia Pacific. Uh, we operate in over 20 countries uh, globally. Um, we have an internet, the biggest internet exchanges in Germany, in Frankfurt, which uh, recently hit 8.3 terabits per second of traffic. Uh, so what I want to do is just quickly focus on uh, this region. So uh, we have a joint venture with uh, JBIX. So we're in Johor Bahru, uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we have two sites uh, with, uh, in Johor Bahru, uh, in Open DC JB1 and JB2. Um, and we're also opening a new site in Kuala Lumpur uh, shortly. Uh, that will be available between April and May this year. Um, we're actually in two locations. Uh, one will be in Ames and the other in uh, uh, Cyber Giants in uh, my, my telly house. Uh, we, I'd also like to announce, we did this at uh, PC, PTC recently, that we will be in uh, Singapore uh, very shortly. So very pleased about that. Uh, in terms of a quick update uh, on, in, on India, uh, we have a very... Uh, substantial exchange in Mumbai, but we're also opening in Chennai, uh, New Delhi, and Kolkata. We are, we're already available in those three uh, locations right now. Thank you. Thank you, John. So next, Dixie, but then I could not see the Dixie person, so I will say instead. Okay, so Dixie and Pixie is an uh, internet exchange in Japan, and they are uh, operated a wide research project, and they have the uh, whole oh, point uh, in the Tokyo and Osaka. They are interconnected, I believe. Okay, the current recent update is in the Howard Geek or WDM is testing and preparing the next Pixie. Pixie is in the or SDN kind of an uh, or IX. Okay, so please contact uh, these guys. Yeah, maybe the Sekia san is a very big guy. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. Yeah, oh, Equinix? Hi, I'm Vijay from Equinix. Um, I'm representing the APEC uh, uh, Internet Exchange Platform. We are operating in uh, six different countries. Korea was actually launched uh, last year, um, and uh, that adds eight metros in total that we are operating in APEC. Uh, we are AS24115, and we have uh, like 700 plus unique AS numbers in the network now. Um, and the two route servers provides multilateral peering and the uh, supported features are like um, um, private VLANs for bilateral and RTBH plus uh, we can support 1 gig, 10 gig and 100 gig. Um, providing multiple 100 gigs is possible within, within a day or two. So if you are looking for 100 gig ports, we can provide that immediately. Um, and uh, well, in globally we can actually uh, Globally, we are operating like 30 plus uh, internet exchange points. I think day by day, day, by day it is growing. Um, recent updates, uh, the BERT software is actually uh, being getting uh, uh, upgraded from 1.63 to 1.68. We are waiting to see how 2.x is actually behaving. So we are keeping that aside for now. 
And uh, if you guys need more info, please follow that link, or you can actually catch me in the uh, peering social later, or Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. And also, thank you for our steering committee contribution at the APIX. Okay, so next, HKIX. Kenneth? Hi, I'm Kenneth uh, from Hong Kong IX, and we have uh, uh, seven uh, pops in Hong Kong, and two of them are our core site uh, in the CUHK, and another five is in the data center, and uh, HKIX VB is our new pop in Mega I, and we also have a uh, research and education network in Mega I. And number of, of uh, AS number connected, we have more than 321. And for the peak traffic, we have 1.5 uh, terabit traffic. And uh, we have just broke a new record just a few weeks ago. Uh, as you know that there are some uh, situation in Hong Kong, so ma many people are working from home. So we have get, uh, got a, 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 a increase uh, on the traffic. And um, for the WoW server, we use Cisco uh, ASR WoW server. We use uh, ASR 1K for IPv4, and we have set up two uh, new uh, WoW server for IPv6. And uh, we have a record um, peering DB. Um, for the WoW server update, uh, we support uh, IP address filtering and IR filtering on our WoW servers. And for the AS number filtering, we will uh, decommission the uh, it by uh, June 30 this year. And we also will support uh, 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 our PKI in the second quarter of this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. <laughs> Next, oh, Jakarta IX, JKDIX. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Dimas from JKDIX. Yeah, I'm introduced uh, about uh, our JKDIX. JKDIX stands for Jakarta Internet Exchange, uh, located in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. And uh, we have three presents currently in the uh, entity data center, JKT2. Uh, the second one is a uh, data center, APG. And the third is a cyber data center international. Uh, these three locations is in cyber area that Dr. Gazisan have shared to you in advance. This is the uh, uh, most, most inter uh, internet network. And uh, we have 32 members currently. Most of them is uh, ISP. The rest are ICP and OTT. And our peak traffic currently is uh, we have uh, 10 gig per second. And uh, we provide a uh, root server also uh, with ISN 137295. Uh, we have updates, uh, yeah. Uh, we have remote peering to IX, major IX in Indonesia, and a remote peering to Chipping Up, major IX in Japan. If you want to connect, just call me, Dimas or Togasi. Yeah, nice peering. <laughs> Okay, if you want to have a present in Indonesia, so please visit Jakarta. We have uh, uh, some places to visit. Yeah, Monas is a national monument in Jakarta. Old city of Jakarta and a Taman Mini Indonesia. And uh, we also have a uh, good food in Indonesia that you can find this food in, a, in a front of our data center. It's a masakan padang, sate madura, and ayam bakar. That is a madura sate and grilled chicken. And uh, this food actually costs uh, really cheap, around three and until five dollars. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dimas. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the APIX. Okay. Uh, next, JPIX. Hello, everyone. My name is Mia, Mia Wang from JPIX, Japan Internet Exchange Company. We are the first IX company in Japan, and it is established in 1997 when I was a young girl. Yes, it's very, yeah. And we have two segments. One is Tokyo segment, and the other is Osaka segment. Yes, it's totally separate. And we are located in almost major data centers in Tokyo and Osaka and other local uh, area in Japan. You can see that uh, our users, we have 213 users in our segment and 72 users in Osaka. Yes, and uh, about the peak traffic, uh, I want to say that in Osaka we grow so fast. Now we have 650 giga in Osaka. It's just doubled than last year. Yes, and uh, you can see we 
have booths outside. So if you want to stop by our booth and you can have get the one T-shirt, maybe we are also a T-shirt design company. We always design our T-shirt. Yes, please stop by your company and contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Liu. So next, JP Nap. So hi everyone. I'm Tomohiro from JP Nap. Uh, Japanese Internet Exchange. So we have two IX uh, Japan uh, JPNAP Tokyo and JPNAP Osaka. And uh, in the JPNAP Tokyo, so we uh, we have seven pops uh, like that, and we also have uh, four pops uh, in Osaka. And uh, the number of um, connected areas uh, is about 170 uh, in JPNAP Tokyo. Uh, about se uh, about 70 uh, in JP Nap Osaka. Uh, also, uh, our peak traffic is, uh, is over 2.09 terabit per second. Um, yeah, uh, in addition to that, uh, we launched uh, some kind of uh, reseller program with uh, IPTP Networks, uh, Entity Indonesia, uh, and GRBB Japan. So if you have any interest, so please feel free to contact us, uh, these people. So thank you. Thank you. So next, oh, MMIX, so kind, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Damien Kai. Um, Myanmar Internet 18 is the first and only Internet 18 in Myanmar. So now we have a traffic, a uh, big traffic is 14 gigabit per second. We have a 30 ES, ESN connected to our HA. Our data center is a true IDC. We have a, uh, our own servers we are using, but recently we deployed Keru server supported by APNIC. And, uh, our, our, we ha also have RPK, I active, uh, RPK is actively dropped in village routes. And next slide. Recently in January, we have an event at MMIX at MMNOC. I'm the chair of this event. Uh, next time, please try to try our event. This event is very successful. Around about 160 person attended. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So when the next, next uh, MMNOC? We, we haven't decided it yet, decided yet but uh, we prefer January because of the weather. This, this year is a very lucky just before the virus. Eh? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next one is an MIX. So no, no representative from the MIX, so I will tell you something about that. So MIX is in the whole oh, IX in Malaysia. Oh, they have the oh, whole 109 uh, connected SN. And oh, we have big traffic 500 gigs. So, I think that is in the most major internet exchange in Malaysia, especially Kuala Lumpur. Yep, okay. So they also have in the, our oh, pop in the Cyberjaya, Johor Bahru, and the Kuchin. Okay, so thank you very much. So next, Nixi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhishek Gautam, representing Nixi. Uh, we are the first exchange, internet exchange point in India. Uh, we have point of presence at eight locations. ASN is 24029. Uh, we have uh, 61 members uh, connected with us uh, with a peak traffic of uh, 161 Gbps. So uh, recently, uh, with regards to our updates, we have, we, are, we have recently changed our policy and are now open, to, open for CDNs and content uh, providers to peer with us at any of this point of presence. And we are also planning um, to open a new POP at GPX uh, data center in Mumbai. If uh, should you uh, want to peer with us, uh, please do connect with me or with Mr. Shobham. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And next, uh, NCIX. Uh, hi, uh, Chris from uh, New Zealand Internet Exchange. Uh, we're a uh, not-for-profit member-run organization. Uh, so all of our members are sort of equally uh, part of our government. Um, we 
currently operate two exchanges in New Zealand, uh, one in Auckland, which has been running for a few years now, and uh, just a few weeks ago we launched Christchurch IEX. Uh, we launched it at uh, the NZ Nog there, uh, so, uh, and we're, we're hoping to launch uh, Wellington uh, hopefully by the end of this year, uh, but it's still to be concerned, uh, to, to be determined. Um, so Auckland, we've got three locations, uh, all in sort of the main areas of Auckland, so 220 Tween Street, uh, Mural Drive, Spark Exchange, and the Vocus DC up in Albany. Currently, according to ParentDB, have 72 pairs. Uh, peak traffic is about 164 gigs now. Um, route servers, yes, to uh, and bird. Um, and um, yeah, so as of this year, after the Rugby World Cup, we're now offering uh, 100 gig and 40 gig ports to, to members. Um, Christchurch, very new. It's only got eight pairs on it so far, but that's not good for an exchange, uh, too bad for an exchange that's been running for three weeks. Uh, Traffic profile, I wrote one gig there, I'm being nice. It's, it's not quite up to a gig yet, but it's very new. Um, and we've got some content providers coming soon, hopefully. Um, yeah, information, go to our website or email support. Um, or there's, you know, a few of us, everyone knows Tom. Uh, and I'm around as well. Cool, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, PHOP on the IX, actually. Hi, I'm Achi. Representing PH Open IX of uh, Philippines. Uh, this is not the first IX in Philippines, but it is the only open IX from the world. Uh, it's, it's open because it's not managed by any ISP and it's actually managed by uh, the government uh, ICT department. So it has three pops Manila, Cebu, and, and Davao. But currently, uh, operational only is the Manila pop. So we're working on the Cebu and Davao. And current traffic is uh, 60 gig with connected ASNs of 60. So it's one gig per uh, person. And uh, you can contact two guys shown in the picture. Mm -hmm. The left one is a friend of mine <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with shorter hair. That's me before. And then Bani, who is also uh, who's the one running the, the IX from the government. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, SGIX. Unfortunately, SGIX uh, cannot send that rep uh, representative here. So the Singapore Internet Exchange, so they have a new data center in the Singtel DC West. Okay, the currently their uh, member is 128 and peak track is 378. Okay, so oh, they are open the new data center. So. And the contact person is uh, here, but uh, they are not here, so unfortunately, yeah. Okay, thank you. Next, oh, Tara Nai. Hello, everyone. My name is Bin from Thailand IX, also known as THIX. So, uh, our data center, uh, sorry. <laughs> Our Thailand IX is located to location. One is uh, Bangkok, Bangrak, and, one, and another one is uh, Nontaburi. Uh, we have uh, 44 members to connect with us, and the traffic uh, peak around uh, 250 gigs. And, and if uh, you have any information or uh, uh, you would like to peer with us, yeah, you can contact us, B or Bell, and uh, you can send the email, yeah, pairing at thiax.net, yeah. Uh, and for the next Pairing Asia event in, will be in Thailand, yeah. We hope to see you guys all, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Bill. So, please be that good host, <laughs> thank you. And next, oh, TPIX. Oh, hi, William. Okay. Um, actually, I just introduced TPIX just now, so I'll just quickly uh, uh, say some, a few words. Uh, right now, our member is like 64, and our peak traffic is 190 gig, and we, of course, run uh, route server, and uh, we, are, uh, we are actually planning to expand it to uh, outside of Taiwan, maybe, yeah, or other city of Taiwan, but that's still on the planning. So, 
That's it, and welcome to Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you, William. Any other information? Yeah, okay. Okay, so TWIX. Sally, please. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandy from the TWIX. And I, uh, the first I want to ask, when, uh, when you hear the TWIX, what were you, uh, the first impression? Is there chocolate box <laughs> or the, the IS? Yeah, <laughs> I think I want to uh, introduce the TWIX. It's the uh, abbreviation of about the Taiwan Internet Exchange. So, and we locate at the Taipei, Taiwan. And our uh, main pub is at the Taipei City. And another, uh, it's another, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, there, we have the three s satellite pubs. It's about, it's at the Banchao, IDC, Taichung, and the Kaohsiung. And uh, we are the first and the largest IS in Taiwan. And we are the natural IS. And uh, our connect ASN is thir uh, 13, and peaks the traffic is the 257 gig, and the router servers is uh, we have the router servers, and the feature of our member is the uh, you can see is the main ISP in Taiwan, and they uh, put their device have to change in our IS yeah, and the. I want to say about the recent updates. Uh, last year, we enabled the ROV function and by implementing RPKI. And the twist is the manners participate, is in the manners participate list. And we are the first Taiwan operator in this list. And upcoming service is like the RTVH and the DDoS mitigation is still in program. I think uh, it will. Uh, launch this year. And the information about our IS you can see in the website or email us or contact me. And thanks, thanks for your listening. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> so next, UNYIX. Yes, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Ari from UNYIX. Uh, currently, we hosted on uh, Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta, Yogyakarta State University in university. Uh, our member consists of universities around the uh, Yogyakarta city. Uh, there is a, a member also from the government. Uh, peak traffic only, currently only uh, seven gigs. Uh, oh yeah, uh, UNIX uh, supported by IDNIC, uh, which uh, donate uh, root server uh, Birds from uh, IDNIC, but birds root server from IDNIC. Okay. Uh, soon we have to uh, we have a ten G interface to support uh, AI research between uh, uh, university connected to UN UNYIX. Traffic doubles because uh, there is a CDN on uh, our data center uh, in UNYIX. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, please join APIX. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next, Phoenix. Hello, everyone. I'm, uh, my name. Uh, hi. I'm uh, from uh, Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam have uh, three points in the uh, Vietnam: uh, Hanoi, uh, Da Nang, and Ho Chi Minh City. So um, uh, Vietnam have uh, 20, uh, 21 member. And uh, per traffic total uh, around uh, 100 uh, gigs. Uh, route server uh, we uh, we use the Cisco um, Cisco router. And um, last year uh, we uh, start um, speed and uh, speed test and uh, DDoS mitigation uh, service. So um, any uh, information uh, um, you uh, you can um, follow um, website uh, vnas.vn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So next, oh, other regions. So the first one in Asteroid. Yeah, so please, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Phyllis Yilmaz. I work for Asteroid International. And um, we are international. 
and um, our first in instance was in Amsterdam, still ongoing. And uh, we just launched uh, Mombasa uh, in Kenya. We are uh, quite excited about that one. And eight networks already connected, uh, including Facebook, Google, Hurricane Electric, thanks again, uh, and a good mix of uh, local providers. Um, so this is still, um, uh, the, the, the peering sessions are being set up as we speak. And uh, apart from those that we are uh, running ourselves, we also uh, provide the same platform that we run ourselves to other IXPs or data centers. Uh, one of them is uh, operating in Lagos, Nigeria, main one, by main one. Um, and the other one is in US, uh, McAllen uh, Data Center. They are utilizing our uh, platform. And um, I'll, I'm, I'm here for the rest of the week. Our CEO, Remco, is here for the rest of the week. If you would like to connect to one of these IXs or would like to uh, hear about the options, how um, we can help you automizing your existing IX or setting up the IX in your data center, uh, let us know. We have all the good stuff, as usual, route servers, manners, um, and RPKI. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. And the last one, links. Thank you, Curtis. So it's just uh, me between you and Raf's bar tab. Uh, so if I was Raf, I would help expect me to talk longer and longer. You speak so far, no one understands. <laughs> <laughs> Be a higher bar tab. Um, so I'm Curtis Linkers from Links. Uh, we uh, primarily run exchanges in uh, the UK. Uh, we run the largest one in London, and we also run. Uh, exchanges in, uh, well, one exchange in the US and one that's actually geographically in Asia, uh, in Jeddah, together with uh, Saudi Telecom, uh, where we have the first peers connected and a few more connecting. Uh, and uh, uh, we, um, uh, which, which might be of interest to the region here as well, uh, London, of course, is the largest one in the UK with a uh, uh, total 900 uh, connected networks. Uh, the uh, development is that we, and for those of you who uh, our members of Lynx, uh, you would have noticed that three hours ago we started doing the first deployments of validation uh, and the drops of invalids of the route servers, uh, which might be a bit interesting is we run uh, redundant route servers uh, for every exchange and in the past we have also run uh, redundant software with uh, Bird and Quagga, uh, but at the scale that we are running it, as especially in London, um, there is nothing else than Bird that scales uh, to do uh, RPKI validation. So as part of this, we're also going for a bird and bird uh, um, setup because that's the only thing that works at the moment. And, um, and that deployment started. The first exchange was three hours ago, which is Manchester. And we're going to go to the coming weeks. We'll convert all of them. Uh, and we have a Lynx members meeting on Monday. And, also, and uh, there's three of us here, me, Nurani, and Mark. So if you want to know more, please come and see us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. So finished. Yeah, thank you very much for listening. So well, this time we have enough time so we could do the, oh, that each person from uh, IXP uh, can be that uh, make a speech. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. So the peering personal? One more, please. So. Yep. Uh, I'd like in, to invite Archie on the stage. And that was way more than 45 seconds, Curtis. Yeah. Hi, Achi again from Globe Telecom. Um, main AS is 4775. Uh, we have a open, very open peering policy. Uh, current location is uh, 25. So we have in the US, East Coast and West Coast, and uh, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, in Asia. And currently, uh, remote peering to Europe to uh, D6, Lynx, and uh, NLIX. Uh, other details will be in peering DB, and you can send an email uh, peering at global.com.ph or send direct email to me. Uh, okay. Um, so I live in, in Makati City. It's a business uh, district, so we just don't work there. So even before, after, or during work, you can actually sneak out. Don't tell your boss. 
uh, and and uh, left uh, photo is one of the socials during Page Nog, so it's a roof tech bar. And then uh, we have lots of shopping malls around Makati and also within the Philippines, so you have a lot of that. And uh, we have street life and street food, so you can eat anywhere. It's relatively safe. Don't just go to dimly lit areas. Even the locals won't go there anyway. So uh, the middle one is a isao, that's chicken innards, so it goes well with beer and lots of beer. And then uh, if you're really very um, adventurous, you can try balut. It's a duck embryo. Duck embryo. It's good. They say it's an... No, it's good, man. <laughs> it's good. So, yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I, think I think I found a bad picture. So, yeah, it's not good on that picture. <laughs> But it, it, it's tasty. Uh, you can close your eyes while eating it. It tastes good with vinegar, too. Uh, and uh, on the lower part, oh, that's suckling pig. Uh, the best uh, region to get is in Cebu. So that's where actually um, Lichon came from, and uh, it's good. Thank you. All right, uh, so I will let uh, Toyama-san close the session, but I have six more tickets uh, to the social. I believe it's just across the road, but not across. Across the road is like, you know, you've got to go across and then across again. Uh, it's still within the Crown Complex, so you have to walk through the casino. So, uh, six tickets. Thank you very much. So, oh, it's a closing at this session. So, thank you very much.